Hey, welcome back to Samsta Games, the place to find new strategy games, and welcome to my top four war games. Now, I'm really excited to start this off because I know that a lot of you love war games, and so do I. Now, uh, I do want to say that I played all of these war games in single player, so I'm going to be focusing on the campaigns and etc., not necessarily on the multiplayer aspect of these games, okay? So let's just jump into it. Panzer Core 2. Now, I think you all know this game, but just in case you don't, I gotta give you the introduction. Now, this game focuses on the Second World War, and this game is absolutely fantastic. So first of all, there's a huge variety of units. There's a really big map. I really like the graphics, because oftentimes in war games, they don't really focus on graphics too much, but in Panzer Corps 2, they really make sure that the units are pretty, and they look really nice, and the map is very nice, and all of that and uh, the combat is very complex there's a lot of different things you can do like encirclement spotting and refocusing on the weather capturing enemy equipment etc the campaign is pretty huge and what i love is that the campaign has a branching which means that depending on how well you do in a, a certain scenario or how you where you choose to go you can choose to either attack here or there the campaign changes so it's not just the same combat in a row one of my favorite things about this game is actually the strengths and weaknesses that you can pick at the beginning of each campaign and th this can really affect the game like they can be quite a big difference for example you could pick something called auxiliary force which allows you to gain a lot of additional uh, units per in in mission but they will only stay there for the mission then they will go away they will not stay like the rest of the army another thing i really love are the briefings so they're quite a lot of fun and they, they explain the the scenario quite well you can also have medals which will give you different like uh, upgrades to your units and etc i think wait 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 i as the resident war game expert disagree with you i think that panzer core i like i mean i don't know what your other top three are but panzer core 2 number four on the list of war games like are you sure about this like i'm not sure you really thought this through okay don't worry don't worry as soon as i reveal number three we're gonna go over why panzer core 2 is number four so don't worry about it or or Unity of Command 2. I love this game so much. So uh, the, the units are kind of like a little less variety and you're going to have specialists which essentially allow you to ha make a unit be like an engineer on it or etc. So to give like different kind of upgrades or to add like artillery to unit to do different special abilities. The game does have briefing also but they're not nearly as nice or uh, fancy as in Panzer Car 2. It's just really just a quick description of what you want to do in the scenario uh, and you're also going to be able to use prestige to give the specialist dimension to your units and or also potentially to get cards which will give you a uh, specific upgrades like for example you might have additional airstrikes or things like that because you don't have a separate like air units it's just the airstrikes that are sort of like a special click it's not a regular unit uh, like you, for example, have in Panzer Okay, well, I've been listening to you, but it sounds like Panzer 2 should be number three, so I don't understand how you made this ordering. Like, clearly, things you've been saying, like, Panzer is more beautiful, they have airplanes, like, what's up with that? Well, this is the main criticism I've heard about Unity of Command 2, and it's the thing I love about this game the most, and this is why this game is number three and Panzer is number four, okay? What is it? Well, the criticism is that in Unity of Command 2, they say that the missions are kind of small and they can feel a little bit of a puzzle-like. Like, like essentially you're trying to find the one or the perfect way to solve the combat as opposed to just choosing what you do. And I don't necessarily think this is true if you're just playing the game, but if you're trying to complete all the objectives like I have, it can feel a little puzzly. And I love that. I love that because, and I'll tell you why. First of all, the missions are quick. You can do a mission in let's say half an hour, an hour the longest, as opposed to Panzer Corps, we're going to be spending two hours easily on a mission. You will know that typically if you, again, if you want to do all the objectives, there are not going to be that many ways to do the scenario. They're going to be like a few different ways. It's mostly you're going to be focusing on out of supplying the enemy and, you know, cutting off their links to supply and then getting them a sort of to starve and suppress their units. And the f act of figuring this out to me is incredibly fun because I love the sort of the feeling of achievement. And in Unity of Command 2, when you do the special objectives, when you find that perfect path, you get that huge achievement. As opposed to Panzer Corps 2, where you still obviously get a feeling of achievement when you finish a mission, but the mission takes much longer and there are a lot more ways to solve it, which to me kind of like dilutes the excitement from getting it because you didn't get it right you just got it somehow 
And so I think this is a personal preference, but this is why for me, Unity of Command 2 ranks above Pentacle. I know it might be a controversial choice. You might think the opposite. I mean, I certainly think the opposite. But um, that's just how it goes for me. So I love, I love when it's a little bit smaller and a little bit more, I see like intense, maybe in the sense like you have to figure this out right. And look, I put my time where my mouth is. I've played like way more Unity of Command than I play Friends Code. I just love this game. It's just the way. So, some, some, some people say that it's a good gateway to computer war games. And I think that might be true because again, because of the fact that it's smaller and it has that, at least to me, that sometimes a little bit of a puzzle-like feeling, it can be a bit more um, sort of easier to start with. Though the game has a lot of complexity if you know about it. And if you don't know about it, I have a lot of guides for this game. And I made videos about how to complete uh, every single objectives in a lot of scenarios. Not all of them that the game does, but a lot of them. All right, uh, let's go into number two. Field of Glory to Medieval. So this is a little bit of a different war game. So what we had so far is we had these kind of like missions that we were focusing where you were trying to uh, find certain objectives and get them. Field of Glory in Medieval doesn't work like that. Essentially, you're going to be fighting on a single battlefield and your goal is to lower the enemy morale to a certain level. This is quite interesting. You're actually not trying to kill the enemy, though you can try to kill them as well. You can do casualties, but your focus is on lowering their morale down to disperse essentially to sort of run away and stop fighting and um, this is obviously a medieval focused game so uh, you're gonna have like knights and um, catapults and uh, I played for the Mongol campaign which is super fun because the the units were also on horseback but they're also able to be archers and also to do like sword combat so they were really diverse so that was really fun for me and uh, uh, you can have uh, units uh, fighting on elephants and etc. So it's just, it's a really fun one, but it's, it's a different type because it's really focusing on that one single battlefield. There isn't much of like, uh, like I would say, progression between uh, the missions in the campaign. You will uh, be able to sort of spend your points to gain like units and things like that and you can keep some of the units but uh, you're not going to be able to get any cards like for example you, like you did in unity of command for some like extra stuff but what makes this game really fun is learning like the depth and the the effects of each of these units and trying to figure out the best way to sort of fight the enemy and to learn the mechanics of it because the the game is interesting in the way that it's fairly simple to play but there's a lot of depth underneath so if you don't want to spend that much time learning into the game you can just kind of play it and it works but if you want to you can really sort of dive dive deep in which is what i did a lot of guides for this game about how a lot of things work so i was really able to deep dive and that helped me play the game a lot better so and there are a lot of different campaigns there are also some dlcs out so you can play as a lot of different uh, nations if you wanted to Right. And I think I just want to point out, you might be noticing at this point that I, I like to go from like the biggest to the smallest in the sense that like Pensacore has just like this big maps and bunch of units and then now we, we are not even like going to a map, we're just in a single battlefield. So that's that's pretty fun for me. I mean, it's kind of interesting. Now, now we're going to jump to number one. <laughs> So Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. So this is another war game that, uh, so obviously this is um, not like based on something historical instead you have like uh, Xenos that you're trying to kill if you're playing as the Blood Angels and etc. And this is again sort of like a battlefield focused war game. You're not going to have a map where you're trying to get objectives. You're just going to be on a specific battlefield and you might try to get to some position on that battlefield, but it's not, it's just a battlefield and, and the graphics are incredibly beautiful. This thing really interesting is that they have research which allows you to give your heroes or your leaders a lot of additional abilities and also majority of your units have a lot of battlefields. So you might be noticing that in the war games, I like to go from big to small and also the closer the war game feel to like a typical turn-based combat game, like the one that you have like a map in, but where each hero has their own abilities, that's kind of what I seem to love the most. And Warhammer 40,000 Battlestar is really like a cross of what is like a war game, but also of like a, the typical turn-based combat strategy game where you have different abilities for your units and your leaders. So that's why I love this game so much because each, first of all, I absolutely love the fact that it's in a fantastic world because, you know, when you're playing like a, regular war game can be kind of you know like sad to think about there might be soldiers fighting somewhere right now so you know when you play that it can be a little dark to think about but if you're playing if fighting like tyranids so you know obviously that's not gonna be happening so that's a lot nicer 
And um, yeah, I, I love the, the different abilities of the special units because it, it allows me to, I think, maybe identify with them a bit more. Like each you have your favorite unit and you fight that. And sure, you, you can say that like tanks are different than artillery, but it's not quite the same as if they have like their own special ability and etc. So that's why for him, Warhammer 40,000 Battlestackle is my favorite. Let me know what is your favorite war game because I'm really excited to hear about that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. You can click on the right to watch uh, or, or in the description to watch any of the games that I have mentioned. And uh, for some of them, like I said, for Entity of Command to Field of Lore to Medieval, I have some guides. Warhammer, I have some tips and tricks. Bands of Core have like one guy talking about the strengths because I think they're really cool, like Strength of the General. So you can look at that too. But um, yeah, I'll see you there. Bye bye.